Hello everyone and welcome to the Mothership Audio Podcast where a bunch of us musicians, artists, engineers and producers talk about all things audio related. I'm joined today by my co-host Efe. Hey guys! And we have a really cool guest today speaking with us. It's Sashka Youngs. Thank you very much and I'm really happy to be with you guys. And we are very happy to host you. Beautiful. Absolutely. And so let's kind of already jump into the questions and just go straight to the beginning. And basically, we just want to ask you, like, what were your earliest experiences in music, like as a young child? Like what artists and albums inspired you and kind of force fostered your artistry? Uh, well, uh, I was listening to a lot of music because my parents, um, I, I, I like to say, had a really great taste, which is... Uh, Great luck, uh, because there are a lot of genres here in my area that are kids listening to. And some of them, I mean, I don't like to share music by genre, but a lot of them ha don't have that quality. So I think that uh, basically, since I was really, really young kid, they were uh, kind of uh, telling me that we have to listen to, to everything and respect everything. But... Uh, mostly there was um, pop, jazz, uh, rock and classical music and also we always had uh, some MTV VH1 back then uh, was that uh, harder to find than now of course because we had satellites and it, it, it was not easy, easy. but uh, they managed to pull that off and we listened to MTV hits and VH1 so we actually uh, me and my brother grew up listening to those uh, things. Uh, first CD that I got from my dad was um, Frank Sinatra, New York, New York. <laughs> and uh, I still have it. Uh, actually, uh, it's maybe not good to say, but we were, in my country, we had wars and we were p poor and uh, a lot of things uh, that my people uh, went through. And I have to say that I think it's uh, it's not original CD, maybe it's a pirate. But then, then again, my dad really tried hard to find uh, any way to find the music that we can listen to and that we can relate to and uh, then evolve, I mean, like uh, human beings at first, and then maybe as musicians. My brother is not a musician. We both went to musical school. He uh, went doing something else and studying something else, but I continued. So uh, basically, also, we both went to musical school, English lessons, ballet, etc. And we listened to we listened to other kinds of music. For example, on ballet, we danced uh, along with classical music, of course. And uh, in at English classes, we worked with my teacher who plays the piano. So we always on our classes sang live with her and we sang Beatles which are one of my favorites still and also Carol King and she is since then my favorite women singer songwriter and her album Tapestry and my favorite song uh, You've Got a Friend so that basically that were the first influences I had as a child so are those, are those some sort of influence that kind of also influence your songwriting, not just your singing style? Definitely, definitely. Actually, I, I want to always make a joke when people say that I um, have my singing, that I have, uh, I will co quote them, some elements and runs and ornaments from... Whitney Houston or Mariah Carey or I don't know, I don't know whom, uh, but like close to that. And I say to them that I actually didn't listen uh, a lot of stuff and songs from them. I just know some hits. I was listening to something else, like Foreplay, my favorite band, like uh, instrumental music and something else, Carol King. She's not a like excellent singer, but she's a great performer and songwriter at first place. So I think that uh, something came from my talent and, uh, and uh, naturally by listening to a lot of hits and a lot of different music and kind of made, made it my style because one of the things that, that I learned from my dad, actually both of them were doctors, but my dad was a self-taught musician. He was also a professional musician. 
my mom went to a uh, musical school and played piano and uh, I learned playing piano. She um, showed me when I was uh, seven, six or seven years old and in musical school I played violin. So that, that's really great to have like two different instruments at that time. My dad was always for that that I kind of uh, make my own style and he was supporting that. And I was searching for that when I was a kid and I kind of realized when I when I started my professional career when I was 16 years old with my first single officially that I wrote and sang I kind of realized that that is the path maybe it's uh, a tougher one but that is definitely the path that I will take because I'm not and I don't want to be like everybody else I don't want to be because I'm just I'm not only a singer I wanted to kind of produce myself and produce mm. uh, other artists. Yeah, that that was something that I, when I went performing as a young kid before 16, I mean, when I said my first single, it's not my first, first single, but I want to say first for adults <laughs> when mm. I was 16, <laughs> like professionally. And before that, I went on a lot of festivals uh, for kids. Uh, uh, I sang in a lot of choirs, traveled the world. Uh, we had a lot of uh, competitions and I even sang in one uh, child group. We had a tour, a tour in Serbia and we had one album. So basically that's a really great experience before hitting the, as I said, and I'm quoting adulthood professional <laughs> music moment. I think that my own style kind of uh, happened when I realized that uh, songwriters, actually, everybody who is a songwriter and, and a singer has to tell a story differently because you're, mm -hmm. you're writing something that you experienced yourself or you heard it uh, from life from other people. And if, if you're not different, if you're not trying, not trying to be different, if you're not naturally like for that, then I would say you're not doing a great job because uh, your story has to be has to be noticed, has to be different in some kind. And um, there's a big difference. People, people when they speak about music and uh, are not professional in music, they make a lot of mistakes. And there are a lot of myths going around, like, uh, for example, that um, they're putting everything in the same basket. If somebody sings, they think that everything is everything behind that uh, performer is uh, about a performer. But there's a big difference with being just a performer and a singer or instrumentalist than a songwriter or producer. Because you are doing the whole thing with a whole team. And nobody can do anything without a team. Uh, not that singer, not, not even ourselves that are writing songs. Uh, so I want to say, I, I do say that a lot in, in some TV shows when I'm a guest, that you're kind of a frontman or you're a captain of your team if we talk about sports. Mm -hmm. But actually the team is what matters. And I decided that I want to be a captain in front of my team, but I also want to be a captain in a brainstorming process, in, in the making. Mm -hmm. And that's the true story, and that's like the rap thing and the whole thing that I, wanna, that I want people to hear and listen to. And that's, uh, that's why I love the experiences uh, as a kid when my... My dad gave me the Karate Kid experience <laughs> because he was a great sensei. But sometimes when I had some performances on TV and they were actually very good mm -hmm. to excellent sometimes. Uh, but he, when I went down from stage or cameras went off, I ran to my dad and I said, yeah, that was really awesome. Did you hear that? And he was like, yeah, it was pretty good. Beautiful. <laughs> He, because he always, so, sometimes some people uh, told him it's not good. He has to always uh, praise me and he has to say to me that it was awesome. But his logic was that uh, I have to learn that that is just a job as anything else. And I don't, I, and I'm, and I'm, I have to learn that I don't fly and I have to learn that on time. So basically when I get to that job properly... 
I would be uh, down to earth for it. And that fame and everything that comes with it is just a side effect of what do you really do from the heart and from, from the core. So basically that was the best lesson uh, that my, my sensei gave me. Beautiful. And uh, I'm very thankful for that because I had a support all the way. But it was not false support that, you know, some, some people say to them, their kids, that they're, they're the prettiest, the best, do everything. Yeah, I, I agree with that. But they cannot be the best in everything. And why should they? I mean, there's always, and, and what actually means uh, being the best in everything you can master and anything. And there's not a limit of that. You can go further and further just in being the best version of your of yourself. I mean, mm-hmm. Usain Bolt is, or Novak Djokovic, they're excellent and they're super talented, but they work hard, worked hard. But why do you have to play tennis like him? Why do you have to run like him? You cannot. Just, just to be clear, you cannot. And you don't have to. You, you run as you want to run. You play tennis as you want to play tennis. Because that's not only that. A lot of things, of course, also luck, is involved in that big success that somebody makes. So it's not, it's not in competing with others. It's not in imitating others in music and just be a singer who wants to because of, I don't know, some seasonal industry moments like in fashion want to do something what somebody else did because they're pretty sure that will uh, make uh, money for them no it's not the recipe i mean it it happens but then you have to realize that you're just that that you're disposable that you're doing uh, something that somebody else is doing and that you're basically changing your trend fashion trend like seasonally and that, for me, that's not the point. Also, music competitions, I think that they, um, I'm a little far from the question, but I think this is important. <laughs> that's fine. That's this fine. is important. I think that uh, also competitions in music are, are very fun. People love them and they're cool. But there is no competing in art because a lot of Absolutely. things are great. And a, lo- a lot of people have different tastes and that's very good. But I'm telling people, if you like folk music, uh, something which is maybe cringe, something which is art, something which is extremely good in, in, or in ev- every, every way, that does not mean that even cringe or something which is maybe addressed bad is, uh, actually has bad quality. It, it does not mean that. Everything can be done with a certain quality. But it doesn't, it doesn't really matter if, if it's well done and, of course, put in the market for the um, group you want to address that to. Mm-hmm. That's one thing. Like you're buying, it's the same thing like you're buying a sweater. It's a good quality sweater, but you like red one and I like blue one. And that's, that's fair. <laughs> but a sweater... Is really good. The price is okay, and you can wear it like for ten years. So, <laughs> basically, <laughs> it's the same thing. People, there are a lot of myths. I, I can I can go on and on, but we we don't have enough time. It I mean it it, it would take a lot of hours. But <laughs> people mix mix a lot of things, and uh, I I would like them just just not to put any genre in some bad basket because even in that bad basket is something that somebody would pick up and that's okay precisely Precisely. it's a common misconception where we uh, mistake taste uh, and subjectivity with quality as Alex mentioned yes precisely you're absolutely right I just want to circle back on the statement that you made that you've already kind of made a plunge into being a producer rather than just an experienced singer, songwriter and uh, performer. So I want to ask you, like, how do you feel about going into the production five? Would you say that it's very different or would you say there is a very kind of symbiotic relationship between songwriting and being a producer? It's definitely a relationship, but somebody who is one is not necessarily the other. What people are mixing up is that uh, nowadays they think, I think that that actually opinion came uh, with the DJs because they're doing their own music and producing everything. But people do 
still think that producers only ones that sit and make arrangements for something or you know uh, sit on a computer and do stuff it's not like that because basically producer has to pack a whole package he or she has uh, the whole picture of how sound has to be and uh, how sound has to be done or what instrument should we put there what um, any detail at all the other opinion as i said is that there is only you know one man or woman on computer and if they do anything they produce the product it's not like that but also they think if songwriters write songs they have to be involved and produce and say all that stuff they can maybe have an opinion but they can also give their songs to producers or to arrangers or to whomever and if they don't know the job or they don't have the talent or, or they don't i don't know they don't do that it's pretty much okay just to songwrite something and just to do that i mean it there are a lot of possibilities so i think yeah they're kind of in a relationship but i i don't think that one can necessarily do another so it's 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 just actually it's a good question because uh, again me with people mixing things up i mean people who are not in like music industry mm -hmm. but um they're actually mixing one um one also thing they think producers are managers or executives and that's not the same no nope, we executive. know that absolutely not <laughs> yeah you know that but people are mixing that up they're not uh they don't know what's a mu music producer when you say i'm i'm producing something i'm a producer they think you're maybe a manager or mm. you're executive and i'm like uh no <laughs> because they're mixing that also with films it's it's different of course but that's also another another myth that you're doing something uh, there you are a person who or, who is organizing everything so <laughs> but basically it's it's not like that yeah it's a mis misconception in 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 any um country that uh, where where people there are some people that don't really know how the show business or the music business is going on um it's not their fault actually it's just the um common slang when it comes to oh this guy it's is common a producer slang, yeah exactly. yeah it is common slang but i just wanted to say it out to to put it out there because uh people do ask me actually journalists when i go to some tv things and what whatever it is it, it, mm. uh, it doesn't matter and they're like, oh, you're a producer, so ah, oh, you're her manager. I'm like, no, it's not that. Thing. <laughs> so what uh, they don't really, I realize, um, I realized uh, that I um, that a lot of people actually really don't know uh, what is which, which is perfectly fine because it's kind of it's with every industry. If you would know the whole chain, every every detail and uh, how it's done, it wouldn't be maybe interesting it's a show business so something has to be in the in the veil of mystery <laughs> for mm. them but on the other hand not to know some things i think it's not good i mean i'm I, i'm uh, by nature curious so i i do like to ask uh, you know how is this done how is this done how do you do that what is it and then when i learn i don't i don't want to call you know it's like you uh, say to dentist that he's a doctor I mean, my parents were doctors, and when I was a kid, I was saying, "Ah, so you're a doctor." I mean, yes, they're doctors, but they're dentists. It's different. Uh, the whole different university. I mean, you don't go yeah. through through same training. So uh, basically, that's respect for them, and they don't have to explain it more. <laughs> yeah, but it's also a problem with the general terminology that we use in the music industry. Like you say, "Oh, I'm a producer," but at the same time, it's a very vague kind of word to use. And a lot of people are like, what does a producer actually do? Yeah, um, yeah. And also, yeah. you know, I have to put it out there also. Uh, I had a kind of issue once, no, a lot of times. But that at one time, we talked about it a lot. And they told me, what, why are you uh, telling people and why are you signing yourself as a producer? Uh, I was like, uh, because I am. And uh, they were like, mm hmm, but uh, in Serbia and in our region, people are not paying, uh, paying attention to, they're not looking to things like that. Only 
in foreign countries. And I was like, why should I care if here somebody is <laughs> not doing proper the maybe um, job or not saying what they do? Let's change that. And then popped out the question. What, what do you think by that? I mean, you're actually, you're a woman and woman are rare, rarely producing things. I was like, wait, are we discussing that I'm a woman who is doing something? <laughs> I mean, there, there are less of us than maybe men, but please, come on. I mean, it's 2021 and exactly. uh, just, just yesterday my maid of honor told me that um, there, there's a festival in Serbia called uh, Feminist Something. Mm -hmm. uh, that is from female composers in every genre and celebrating women in music. And I was like, it's a great thing, but why does that even exist? Exactly. I mean, it shouldn't even be an issue. I mean, there they is the problem. Yeah, there is yeah. still a problem that people think that oh, you, the, the market itself is oversaturated and basically they're always thinking like, oh, man should be a producer. No, I think the problem is that we do not have enough women in these like roles, yeah. you know. Like, we don't have enough women producers, we don't have enough women engineers. Uh, something that is outside of what is expected from a woman, which unfortunately in the last few decades was they should always be the vocalist. And I think that it should spread out because there are so many fantastic female producers that we met and we know mm -hmm. that are just don't have that same weight behind because they are quote unquote because they're female producers. But yeah, I feel that it is changing slowly, mm -hmm. and that's the main thing. But still, uh, we have a lot less women in any kind of sector in our um, yeah, market itself. So, <laughs> yeah, in yeah. time, yeah. hopefully, in time, more of them. Will yeah, be but the, basically, I'm, 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 I'm not. I'm still like not realizing that in this century and this particular year that we're in, that it's uh, that we have to. Uh, make uh, female and, and male uh, uh, jobs and whatever. It's it's just it's. I will not express myself because <laughs> maybe children will listen to this. But it's just <laughs> whatever. I, I, I did. <laughs> yeah, okay. we, we felt what you wanted to say. So I, I think sure we all did. <laughs> exactly. exactly. I, I wanted to say yeah, but it it has two two words. Uh, first is is safe. Second is not so. Let's, let's first is bull, I suppose. First is bull. It's total yeah. bull. So bull be. Yeah, and it's and, and it's bullying. <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. It's Perfect. bullying women around the world. So, uh, yeah. I mean, my English. I'm sorry for maybe my English. I I think it's good Jeez. enough, but maybe for expressing something, uh, it's it's not it's not that excellent, but. Um, I think I managed to avoid. No, it was it was perfect. So don't <laughs> exactly. worry about it. Exactly, we um, are precisely understanding everything. So don't worry absolutely. about it. Okay, and I thank think you now for that. that people actually got the message that they should have. I'm pretty sure they did. But let's kind of go back and uh, talk about your journey about you know going from these early beginnings and then coming to the point where you thought to yourself like, okay, this is music. This is what I want to do for a living. And what was kind of that moment for you where you felt it and you knew that this will be your career? Well, if I tell you that I was always in music ever since I was a kid and that my thoughts were actually, nah, I'm not going to go to study music. I'm not going to go to music academy. This is something that I do like easily. I can do that like if I want to that also became uh, during high school my my kind of uh, already job and i was like i want to do something else like i want to be i don't know a veterinarian or whatever something else i had uh, ideas or journalist or professor of um, portuguese or whatever mm -hmm. and uh, my parents told me okay whatever you want but music is a logic step so go study that 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 is easy for you and that you like and uh, then um, when I dropped um, that high school which was for some um, natural natural sciences mm -hmm. I was also in other high school I was into high schools musical high school and and the other thing and I dropped the other thing and I was like yeah maybe they're right this is easy 
I'll go to Academy, <laughs> the Music Academy. And then I realized that uh, my dreams of being something else were just because I felt in music so easy and so safe that I was thinking that is my comfort zone and that I'm uh, satisfied with, with my skills, that I, I will uh, eventually, of course, improve them along the way. But I was, I had that period where I was thinking that art is something beautiful, but I'm not actually helping people on the field. I'm not discovering something new. I'm not doing something that like really matters. Like during COVID, our jobs and entertainment industry, I mean, part of entertainment industry was, uh, is still paused and uh, muted, which is something that is not uh, necessarily necessary <laughs> because um, you need doctors, you need people who provide food, and you have a lot of other things that are more important at that moment. But on the other hand, because I, I I was holding that thought thought for like for a lot like in years, and then one day I realized actually that what do we do is actually helping people to feel emotions, to wake up from something when they hear uh, music or any kind of art. They evolve, they find something new about themselves, they use it for personal growth, and if not, they're just enjoying it, and they're relaxing from other stressful things they're doing. So actually, that's when I realized I'm helping people, <laughs> and uh, in a very, very great way. So I decided that definitely I'm going to I'm going to be a full-time musician. I mean, I was already at the time, but I was like, nah, I'm not going to go for something else. <laughs> if, oh, wanna, I, if I want to study something else, I can, but like sometimes some sometime in life if I decided, I can go for it. But music is actually something so beautiful that I didn't realize it was really, really, really important. And uh, something that you cannot quite describe fully, something that you cannot touch, but it touches you, something that you can hear, but you, uh, with every new hearing, you cannot hear everything, and you can always discover something new. So, yeah, basically, it's really a great, great um, job. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. And then talking about your job, let's go to your latest single. It's called Sorry, Not Sorry, right? Yeah, Sorry, Not Sorry, or in Serbian, Sorry, Not Sorry, like uh, roughly translated. Uh, sorry, so not sorry, but like, <laughs> sorry, precisely, like sorry. sorry. Actually, sorry, it's a different word for sorry, and it's it, it's it's vini. That means sorry. Da da, you tell it in eh, da. Yeah. When, you say it, when you say it in slang, like translated in slang, we don't say sorry. We say sorry, sorry, not sorry. Mm. <laughs> beautiful, and, um, beautiful. And let's talk yeah. about it a bit. Like, um, how did it come out? What was your inspiration? And when did it come out? We are going to add the single to our description on YouTube as well. So our listeners can check it out too. So if you'd like to pause now, pause it now. Check the song out. And let's hear <laughs> your own take for your single. Well, uh, yeah, it's a single I did with my great uh, friend and colleague, Philip Jonathan. He was a guest of yours. And uh, he is also first place uh, producer arranger and uh, also songwriter. He's also a great singer, but he decided for himself that he doesn't like to perform publicly. So even he's a great performer. He likes only being in studio, not like being out on stage. That was also my, uh, my question for me when I was a kid. Should I, I mean, I do this really great on the stage, but should I go out there? 
or should I say studio? So I decided to do both. <laughs> and that's kind of balance. I'm, nice. I'm still more comfortable in studio, though, because I, I don't have makeup. I don't have, you know, anything. I can go in pajama and do the thing. <laughs> uh, and when, when we're talking about Sorry Not Sorry, it's fresh. I would like uh, to say 80s vibe, but new age product. Because uh, ever since, uh, I mean, we we were doing this before the the weekend dropped out, uh, Blinding Lights, and 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 that singles that told us that that is gonna be uh, apparently the new wave in trend. But uh, it's a good thing because we are, we were in trend now. But uh, mm. uh, we uh, we decided to go for that kind of song that I. Uh, that is not a ballad that I'm. I didn't. Um, I didn't do a lot because uh, people were expecting from me some ballads with great singing, with whatever. And I, I told Philip, I want to do this for for myself, for my soul. I want something that has catchy, catchy part that can make people dance. Mm-hmm. That is that is uh, not easy for singing, but also can easily be sang. And. Um, that can actually just be easy. That can be easy for everyone to understand, even if they don't uh, don't know Serbian language. Actually, we're we're now in making of of the English version. It's gonna be ready soon, and I'm really really looking forward to that because uh, the song is released in Serbia, but is is now. On radio stations in uh, ex-Yugoslavic countries, all of mm. them, and I'm really, really happy because of that. And also, it started playing in Japan at some radio Seriously? stations. Seriously, yeah, I heard that. Seriously. That's amazing. Yeah, and and in Serbian. And so they asked us, "Do we already have English version?" And I, I told Philip. Okay, now we have to hurry. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> we, Beautiful. We have to have other versions. So. Basically, what I'm doing, I'm I'm just because I was that lucky that people are perceiving me as a great singer. So I told my crew, okay, I don't want to make songs where my voice is in front of everything and people have to listen to how good maybe I sing or whatever. They are difficult to sing. And I told them that I want to express myself with faster ones. I want to express myself even even by authentic writing with even swearing some some in some parts. The next songs have something which is maybe explicit. Mm -hmm. Because I realized that after a long road I I was on that uh, that actually to everyone, I have to say sorry, but not sorry. Uh, this is me. This is me not singing only songs that are ex- that are acceptable to everyone. That are very fine. That are you know without explicit content, and that I felt is not the whole me. And uh, now I'm in the stage of uh, of creating where I just want to be fully me. And I don't want to be sorry for anything, for expressing myself. Mm-hmm. And uh, I want to do faster songs. I want to do even mixtures that that I actually do, uh, mixtures of genres, pop, Balkans, actually maybe hip hop, R and B, and soul. And I want to do that, even if it's not. Somebody would say they're more like rap. It's not singing involved a lot but that's everything that that we will do and we do it's going to be definitely 100% me so that's basically the the most important thing that i said earlier in the first question uh in the first answer that the most important thing is to be honest and to be me because uh, during uh, this 10 years or more i had some great offers they offered me to be in some groups they offered me some contracts in folk music i really had great offers i cannot say but i turned that down i said thank you really really thank you but that is not me and that's the most most important thing i would maybe do that job good but i don't want 
I don't want to lie to people because eventually they're, they're going to realize I'm there for the money or for something else, which is not the right reason. And I want to do it for the right reasons. I want people to trust me, what I write, what I sing, because uh, that's the only way I see it. It's, it's proper. And if you want to go for the money, you know, you know what to do. You will, take, you will take composers and arrangers and producers and you will, you will be an industrial product, and which is, of course, fine. If you want to be just a performer, if you want to be whatever you want to be, just be that. And for me, I want to be me. That's the purest reason. Beautiful. That's Such a nice beautiful answer. way of saying it. Yes, exactly. Absolutely. It's always this distinction because, yeah, between. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes it was really that offers were great. And sometimes when I, I was in one music competition and I had a lot of songs, actually whole album prepared. And people have to realize the TV formats of music competitions, competitions they love so much are actually TV formats. And they do that for television and for fun. And they don't, even if you have a contract with them, they don't really care about your career after that. Just some of them. I had that experience when I was really popular at, at that time. After that TV show, few of us were actually really popular. But some of them were supported by production and some of us were not. Actually, my people and friends want to, they often actually say that I was left in darkness the most. When I, when all I was asking back then is just to put me on TV, just to give me marketing. And I will do the rest. I have material, I have resources, I have everything. I even have videos for my songs. But they, they didn't let me. But then I, I said to myself, of course, I was uh, angry at one point, but then I, realize I have to be patient and just have to wait because after every darkness <laughs> there's a dawn so I just waited for the dawn and then I continued <laughs> so, so would you say that this is now the dawning of Aquarius I mean dawning of your Aquarius, musical Aquarius, journey actually actually it's not the dawn was uh, five or six years ago okay. but uh, I was I was uh, living mostly uh, uh, I was um, living in Belgrade, Vienna, Vienna, Belgrade, uh, mm. Vienna, Vienna, Austria. And I was doing a lot of concerts and some stuff there and, and some very, very great performances. But then I realized that I have to come back here and that I want to do, I don't want to do Europe that way. I have to release something here more often. I had releases here during that period, but they were rare, like once a year or two, twice a year. That was really... That was rare. And then now I decided that I'm going to go for much more than that. So that's basically not that dawning, but it's different kind of dawning. <laughs> Amazing. And when you do, please let us know. We'd love to have you on if you want to talk about your new releases and how your journey is going. Uh, so thank you very much. Precisely. I would be really, really, that would be really great. And thank you. So since we already talked about the music scene in the Balkans, more or less at the beginning of our episode, we also wanted to ask you, like, what artists do you think that listeners should uh, keep an eye or ears open for? Uh, there's also a lot of people to recommend, but uh, the first woman that I uh, am thinking of is uh, uh, Evie Manivi. Uh, her name is Ivana Vukmirovic and her band, she is a singer-songwriter, she is amazing, super talented woman, strong woman, and I think that her album is something that you should listen to. I'm not sure what is the name of the album, so I'm not going to say now, but I will recommend her to you as a guest, of course, and she, she will, if you, if you want, of course. Of and course, we'd love to have her She will be pleased, Please. she would love that. Uh, she is really amazing, and I think that uh, that album and she herself has to be more uh, more out there publicly. Has to get bigger marketing because nowadays a lot of things is about marketing, you know, to reach people. Mm. But I think she will get there. She is known in music musician circles, and she has her fan fan base, 
which is not yet big enough, but it will be. I think she will grow because she's fascinating. And now I, I listen to uh, that album is in in English, so everybody can understand. But I heard few new songs that she made, and these are in Serbian. And I'm very pleased to say that that new soulish sound is finding its way not only in English, but in Serbian, which is rare. People don't have courage to maybe uh, record neo-soul and uh, some uh, other stuff, some other genres that are basically maybe more comfortable to listen in, in English. They were not recording it in native language. But I'm very happy to see that people are doing that now in Serbian. There's also one uh, big musician. I mean, he's famous. Uh, he's not unknown, but I would recommend everybody to listen to him. He's one of my favorites. His name is Magnifico. <laughs> and he is super talented composer. He does, uh, he, he does have a lot of par- parodies. Uh, a lot of songs are in... Uh, English, but in like bad English. <laughs> he's he's doing that on purpose because it's fun, because it's parody, and he's also a great composer for films, for series, and he is one of my favorite producers from this uh, area. And if somebody asks me, they ask a lot in interviews. I would really, really like to do something with him. I will say, I would say this like this i'm looking forward to work with it, with him <laughs> beautiful it's, it's yeah, like a plan like, it's, or, and, yeah, and a dream of sorts huh? yeah you heard it here first it's... folks so. <laughs> yeah yeah but then uh, i i cannot just at the this particular moment i cannot think of there's a lot of people that are mm. not yet famous and to listen to there's a lot of great music here I would recommend people just to explore that on YouTube, on the internet, on Google, and you will find a lot of treasure. Yeah, it's also part of the reason why we started this podcast, is to kind of shed light on these amazing artists. And so. thank you guys for that. That's pretty awesome. And, and thank, thank you for, you for coming. Well. Yes. And uh, speaking of which, uh, we are slowly coming towards the end of the episode so we would actually like to uh, ask you you know what you, what projects are you working on right now where can people follow you and uh, what future plans do you have well i will start from the last one from the plans because covid is dictating the plans at the moment right. i mean uh, part, part, yeah. not everything were part of our plans Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm basically in all interviews that asking me that, but I'm saying uh, no plans, just work and just releases, and we will see what will that where where will that end up in and um, and where will where will that lead? Uh, my plan is, if I can call it a plan, but it is to uh, put as much as music out there uh as i can as we can so people can listen to because during this period uh, not a lot of people is really releasing stuff because they cannot work they cannot go to stage but radio and tv are still working youtube is working people listen to it and also music platform so that is that is my plan we have a lot of songs to be released to be done and I'm really looking forward to that. Actually, one one is going um, to be released in next two weeks. And we're w- working on another planned for April or maybe end of April. So, yeah, there's going to be a lot of material. About where can they follow me on every social network? By name, uh, Sashka Youngs, actually, it's written uh, S-A-S-H-K-A. Tashka with K and Yanks is written. A lot of people say Janks or something else. No, it's Yanks because it's from Europe and we uh, J we for J we say uh, yeah, so it's J A N X and uh, under that name you can find I think anything on Google. Perfect. We're uh, gonna have everything in the description below for people to find decided, out. But we decided, yeah. But we decided. Uh, I have to uh, tell your listeners that we decided. 
and further on we're gonna use just name Youngs, but with Y. Y A N X, just Youngs. Uh, simple four letters. That's gonna be my stage name for the foreign releases, because we have uh, some. We we're preparing something and we are doing something with some songwriters, friends of mine, uh, Adi Semenich, who lives in uh, United States, and Lionel Lombard, who is from USA but currently living in Brazil. We're doing with them something, some song. I hope international, international releases. And they're going to be under a, sta under a stage name Youngs. So you can also find it everywhere. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Nice to hear that. And um, if you are listening from the future, uh, where she has already released her stuff internationally, <laughs> we are going to put Youngs on the description as well. But for the um, current 2021 March and April people, uh, you can find her um, current name and current accounts in the description okay, yeah. yeah and instagram mostly of course uh, instagram facebook twitter i mm -hmm. also have other accounts like soundcloud and etc and youtube of course no youtube is under youngs <laughs> you, oh. you, youtube is under youngs yeah it was sashka youngs but it's uh -huh. actually it's me jukebox entertainment that's my kind of my i I also like to sign, when I write for other people, I'm signed Sashka Young, Sore Miss Jukebox. That was my stage name when I was a youngster. Mm -hmm. And I had a few releases uh, for MTV Adria back then under that name. But uh, now is my, my name is uh, as a producer. Definitely Sashka Youngs, And I have to say that uh, not only for the future people listening in, in the future, but Youngs is already released, has one release, and, and we started that. But for, like, international releases, remember the name Youngs. <laughs> I'll be Beautiful. excited to hear from all of that. So uh, hopefully, yeah, we are going to hear a lot of music coming from you and uh, also under the name Youngs. And, yeah, hopefully you will be able to talk about your new releases one of these days as well here with us. And, Thank uh, you very much. Pretty much wraps up the show. You have any any last words? The last words for the show, <laughs> yeah, for the show. That sounds criminally uh, uh, funny and wrong at the same time. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, last words for the for the podcast. Yeah. Well, um, I would only maybe say to youngsters out there that are struggling during COVID or during any time. Like a young musicians want to succeed, it's just that you have to work. You don't. You don't have to. You don't back down. Just work and just be patient, and it will happen. But it will happen in a way, maybe sometime that you cannot imagine, because there were things like I said I'm gonna go to Eurovision and I went three times but as a, but, but as a back vocalist and uh, dancer and I was four times uh, front runner for Eurovision myself as a lead singer but I never yet went to Eurovision as leader but never mind maybe it's not for me but I wished for Eurovision and it happened to me so uh, things happen to us in a way we don't even realize we just have to stay on the path and just uh, stay true to yourself. Uh, listen to older colleagues, but not take everything for granted because uh, you are there to find new ways and uh, new sounds in, in music and new anything, like a fresh blood, like a new creative mind, like, like explore, explorers. So keep on doing what you're doing, and uh, everything will uh, everything will come your way definitely. Oh, great, amazing! That's a so, beautiful way to end the podcast. Thank you. Precisely. You have heard it. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Sashka, Thank once you again too. for joining us. It's been a huge pleasure uh, meeting you and having you in our show. And as Alex mentioned, we hope to see you soon again in this podcast. And this is Efe, and I'm leaving the last words to Alex. See you guys. Yeah, I just want to say thank you very much for having me. And I think it's a pretty awesome thing you're doing here. And uh, I also like to hear very uh, quality podcasts. This one uh, is definitely 
gonna be on my list and i'm happy that uh, uh philip uh, uh discovered uh, you to me and uh, i'm recommending every everybody to listen to your podcast Ah, oh, thank you so much. Thank that means much. a lot. Thank you. Well, <laughs> anyway, Sashka, once again, thank you. And uh, you You're have been welcome. listening to the Mothership Audio Podcast. And we will see you next time. Ciao. Bye. Bye. <laughs>